Welcome back to the Spencer Tarot. Today we are going to be looking at the suit of swords. Swords represent the air signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. In the modern deck, swords are spades. And swords represent air and represent mental activity. If you look at my handsome, distinguished, intellectual gentleman here, uh, he is uh, in his beautiful Victorian library, surrounded by his books and his puzzles and studying and learning. Uh, this is a theme of swords. Very me as an Aquarius. I am a professor. I love to read and to soak up knowledge. And I had mentioned I'm also a Harry Potter nerd and I am a typical Ravenclaw. And Ravenclaws are also the studious creative types. Well, let's start looking now at the sword cards 1 through 10. Let's look at the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords represents mental clarity. The gift of mental clarity, inventiveness, and originality. And usually it indicates mental clarity to start something new. Maybe you're beginning a new project or a new task. And it, this allows you the ability to think clearly and to draw upon your intellect, inventiveness, and originality to solve problems. With the Ace of Swords, I had used on my card a medieval sword uh, surrounded by ramparts and castles. And to me, I kind of love this old medieval imagery of the sword of Excalibur and you're beginning a new quest, a new puzzle to solve. And the swords in general love mental problems, uh, you know, uh, solving mysteries, uh, that's very me. I enjoy very much escape rooms. I enjoy murder mysteries and things like that and these mental puzzles to figure out. And this means that you have the intellect to draw on to use in any challenge you might be experiencing in life. Ace of Swords, mental power mental clarity, inventiveness, and originality. Ah, now to my favorite sword card, the Two of Swords, representing peace. On my card, we see a beautiful tea garden surrounded by roses, and the ability to just enjoy peace. True inner peace comes from the ability to resolve challenges, to resolve duality within oneself, to resolve arguments, and to choose peace, creating peace in all areas of one's life. Usually the two of swords means to mentally slow down, mental mastery. And what that means is if your mind is running a mile a minute, you're usually in anxiety. But if you learn the power of quieting the mind through the practice of meditation, of taking time for yourself to unwind, then you are at peace. And one aspect of Victorian London was people in London stopped at four o'clock for tea time. 
And this is something I do every day, is just sitting with a beautiful cup of elegant tea and just being is a great practice. Uh, and it doesn't have to be tea. You could be having a coffee break and just relaxing and taking a little time for yourself. It could be yoga and meditation. It could be just, you know, grounding down in nature. One thing I love to do living a block from the ocean is to just put my feet in the sand and sit and breathe. And I also believe that breath work is one of the greatest things you can do to oxidize your body, to detox, and bring you into a space of peace. Um, interestingly enough, as I am recording this right now, it is 5 a.m. in the morning, and I wake up with the sun at the crack of dawn, and I love the quiet, the silence, the ability to just be. As I sit here with a beautiful cup of my favorite rose tea, and just lighting some candles and being, and being at peace. Peace is a choice. Do you look for arguments? Do you look for drama? Do you look for energy feeding? Do you look for I have to be right and you're wrong? Or can you just shine your light and be? And the mental superior person understands how to quiet their mind. A typical Gothic Victorian theme is the Three of Swords, sorrow, melancholia. In this card, we see a tragic woman alone, in a moody feeling of sorrow. The Three of Swords re is about releasing old patterns of wallowing in depression and sorrow. And believe it or not, if you are experiencing any form of chronic depression, sorrow, melancholia, a lot of this has to do with the habit of thinking negative. I remember when I had tragedy in my life, in my early years, before I understood this, uh, for example, losing my partner at age 25, uh, of having some abandonment issues in my life, I focused on it. I wore it like a badge. I'm a widow. I am alone. Nobody loves me. Boo hoo. And I wallowed in that and made myself severely depressed. And it took some time, but I learned to change my habits, my mental habits, through the process of meditation and grounding breath work, journaling, mantras, reframing my brain, affirmations, to learn to get out of those negative habits. Very interesting. During the COVID years, I lost a lot of friends again. I had a, three friends that passed away. Uh, my father passed away last November. My second uh, husband passed away actually last November as well. And I noticed that, yes, we go through a mourning process, but I wasn't depressed. I wasn't wallowing in sorrow anymore. I had much more of a spiritual maturity and a mental maturity of being able to direct my thoughts into positivity, optimism, and blessing my life. The opposite of sorrow is getting into gratitude. And a simple thing you can do is if you have a pattern of sorrow in your life, it's every morning in a journal write 10 things you are thankful for. 
Doing this process every day will reframe your mind and draw to you more happiness, abundance, and opportunity. I have been doing an abundance and blessings journal now for over 30 years. I do it every morning. First thing when I wake up, my journal is by my computer and I write 10 things I'm thankful for. It shifts my whole day, no matter what might be creating irritation in my life. I am not a person who enjoys the 4th of July because I despise uh, the smell of animal carcass on the grill. I despise uh, illegal fireworks and noise. And uh, while all that was going on yesterday, all the way to three in the morning with illegal fireworks, um, my um, landlord, where I live in my beautiful condo, was doing some renovations. So I had paint fumes, I had jackhammers, I had all this noise. And I'm like, wow, I'm so relaxed. It's a choice. And while um, I was starting to feel a little bit of tension from the noise, I said, let me just go back into my blessings. Oh, my uh, hallway of my craftsman home here is going to be completely repainted and renovated. Oh, I'm getting beautiful new wrought iron around my balcony. Oh, um, you know, the fourth is going to be over and we'll get back to a nice quiet day. I focused on positives and I took myself out of depression and sorrow into happy optimism. And you have that choice. Sorrow is a choice. You don't need to choose that. You can choose gratitude and blessings instead. The next sword card is the Four of Swords, Truce. On my card, I use sort of a Civil War image of a battle coming to an end of the North, the, you know, the Yankees versus the South, the Confederates. I kind of joke a little bit with this in my family because I was born in Florida and my dad was born in Key West and I have a lot of family through the South of the beautiful areas of Savannah, Georgia and Charleston, South Carolina. And then on my mom's side of the family, um, it's all from New York. Uh, from New Rochelle and those areas. And it's interesting in my family that some of my siblings are more attracted to New York. And that's fine. I have a sister, my youngest sister, who is just obsessed with New York and loves to go to New York three to four times a year. And I'm kind of the opposite. I'm like a southerner and I, I want to go uh, to New Orleans and I want to go to uh, Galveston, Texas. And I want to go to Savannah and sit, you know, on a porch swing on a, in a beautiful Queen Anne Victorian house and drink my mint julep. You know? And so we always in life have differences of opinions, different likes. And what happens is people can get into a pattern of I'm right, you're wrong. And if you live from that, you will always be creating tension, arguments, and drama. There are people that look for fights. There are people that look for, I have to put you down because you're not doing what I'm doing. Um, many of us are very passionate uh, about things. And um, there's things I'm passionate about. Like for example, when it comes to health, I am a plant-based vegan and I'm very passionate about that and I've written many books on veganism. Uh, and there are people that are on the complete opposite end of that, that like, oh my gosh, you would never get me to be vegan and I am a, a strong carnivore and I will never give up my steak. And I see, for example, um, many people going that route and then developing heart disease and obesity. But you know what? That's their choice. And I have to let that go and say, you know, I have my belief and you can have your belief. 
Um, and we're all like that. There are people that are non-smokers and people that defend their right to smoke. There are people that don't drink and there's people that are going to defend their right to have alcohol. There are people that are Republicans and fiercely so, and people that are Democrats and fiercely so. There are people that um, are, you know, do not like Christianity and there are wonderful Christians and have different beliefs. And, you know, there, uh, there are people that um, believe that their nation is better than another nation. And these are areas where if we are having to defend our right to be right, there's going to be conflict. I find it so tragic in the year 2024 that we are still dealing on this planet with power games, with wars. Um, I think about you know, the conflicts in the Middle East. Do you realize that Middle Eastern conflicts have been going on for over 3,000 years nonstop? It's just, you know, mankind, you need to evolve. I think about, um, since I have a lot of both Russian and Ukrainian friends, um, I think about the tragedy of that. Um, I'm going to share something very personal. Um, the last relationship I had was with a Russian ballet dancer named Yevgeny. And uh, I call him Jean. That's the uh, English equivalent of Eugene. And Yevgeny uh, was a beautiful ballet dancer from Russia, born in Moscow. And, uh, you know, was here in America dancing with the Bolshoi Ballet, and we were a couple for a while. He decided, because he was finishing up his master's in dance, to go back to Russia. And I had a bad feeling. I said, oh, honey, please don't do that. Uh, you're in America now. Things are opening up here for you. Uh, you can get uh, to teaching ballet and dance at a studio here. We can be together. Uh, and he decided to go back to Russia. And I said, well, I'm scared about this Ukrainian conflict. And he's a bit younger than me. And he says, oh, no, I'm in college. They can't draft me or anything like that. So he goes back to Russia, to a little city outside of Moscow. And he wakes up one morning and the Russian military police are at his door holding a gun and say, um, you will report to this regiment on this day, and if not, we shoot you, we put you in prison. And he had no choice, and he, and I, and he uh, called me, and I was trying to get him out of the country. I have friends in Finland, and, um, you know, they closed down the borders, and he was drafted. Uh, we... You know, we secretly uh, kept in touch when we could because in Russia they banned Facebook and different types of social media. So he had to borrow a phone and, you know, we had to find little times to talk. And it was, you know, it was very scary for me. And uh, he told me that, you know, that he was going to go off to the, the Ukrainian front to fight. And uh, he purposely chose to fall into uh, a river in the middle of winter and make himself sick so he could be in a military hospital so he didn't have to fight and that went on for several months and then he just disappeared i never heard from him again and more loss this is like my gosh you know I, i'm widowed twice and now i'm widowed for a third time and i just like wow all this loss and i realized i was so angry that i thought God, you know, the fucking Russia and Ukraine and all of this conflict for territory and blah, blah, blah. It's going on hundreds of years later. You know, we had all the, the Russian Revolution and there's still conflict. And it's, you know, it's just like mankind needs to evolve. And it's interestingly enough, I also have Ukrainian friends. I have a beautiful Ukrainian concert pianist friend. I actually produced her album. Uh, her, her last album, I should say, and she was on the other end of it. And so, you know, I remember her saying, oh, I hate the Russians and the Russians are, you know, fucking assholes. And I, you know, just whole kind of 
conflict. And I, I understand, you know, like her family was in danger. She went back to Ukraine into a bomb zone and it was scary shit, you know. And this is the world we live in. And if we can learn to evolve and not be, I'm right, you're wrong, we can resolve wars, we can resolve conflicts. It's interesting watching the political mess of our current 2024 election with, uh, oh my God, just makes me sick, with Trump and Biden. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in this whole, like, blame game and putting people down and, you know, this media circus crap. And this is where in the world we need to evolve. Can you come to a truce? Can you have strong beliefs in yourself, but don't need to place those beliefs on other people? This is something we need to look at. When you can just be in your own truth without having to sway people to your belief, then you're living a better mental life. Now for another difficult card of the swords, and that is five defeat. And in this card, we see this man that has just recently been made homeless, just kind of sleeping on the street and not knowing where to turn. And this is a difficult card for a lot of people. Five of defeat means releasing the fear of failing at something. It's about repairing your self-esteem and your self-confidence if it's damaged and breaking through all fear issues. We've all had fear. There are many people that I have known in my life that have been incredibly successful. And I've known a lot of people with incredible potential that never really accomplished anything in their life. Uh, one of my best friends uh, through my 20s and 30s who I loved very dearly had this incredible talent in poetry and writing and uh, just, you know, music, and he was very handsome, and all this talent, and he never chose to go to college and truly cultivated that. So he went into a field that was uh, slightly related to that, uh, that was, that he became very successful in, so he's a success but not what he really wanted to do. And he was always exhausted. He was always poor. It led to alcoholism and drinking. It led to um, patterns of illness uh, and patterns of being angry at that and taking it out abusively on others and um, using mental aspects of trying to be superior and manipulating and just all this, I'm just going to say toxic shit. And one of the most heartbreaking things in my life was having to break off that relationship. After I broke off that relationship, 
um, I went through a long period that went on for years of sort of like stalking and harassment. And it was because this person wasn't happy with their life and didn't have the self-esteem to break through that to pursue the creative pursuits and the mental pursuits that would have taken that person's life to a higher level. Um, I remember uh, my friend being super angry of all my degrees and all my successes uh, and never really did anything with that. Da a, a dilettante is a good word. A dabbler. Uh, this this ex-friend um, you know, loved music. And I said, well, study. And, you know, studied a little bit of piano, a little bit of music, uh, talked forever about wanting to create a band, never did. You know, talked about always wanting to write a novel, never did. Talked about, um, you know, things he was going to do, never did. Um, and, you know, that's a loser mentality, in my opinion. And it's the, the card of defeat. I see so many people that come to me, they call me up and they say, Jim, I, you know, I want to be a famous actor. I have a passion for drama. And then I tell them, this is what you need to do. And you're going to need to practice two and three hours a day. Oh, well, if I have to practice, you know, I can't hang out at Starbucks with my friends, you know. And they just have this sort of lazy ass, defeatist um, attitude. And with that is that underlining, what if I fail? What if I'm not good enough? And here is a phrase that I've always loved. Hard work beats lazy talent. I know people that have all of the potential and greatness for success, but are just lazy. And that is also part of defeat. If you look at this guy in my card, he's just laying in the middle of the street on a blanket and not doing anything about his situation. You know, oh, I'm defeated, boo-hoo, victim, victim, instead of like, okay, I lost my job. What is something else I could do? If you notice, this man is not in rags. He's still in a nice suit. He's still got a pocket watch. But he's too, he's too much caught in his fear of failure to think about what he could do. Like, I can look at that picture right now and say, well, he's got some, you know, some probably some gold pocket watches on him. He can go hawk them and get some money to get some food. He could, you know, look into, okay, what are some, you know, some new job opportunities for me? He can start making plans, but he's just laying on the street feeling sorry for himself. And that is defeat. And this is toxic. To have a great life, you need to break through your fears and get into self-confidence. Um, I feel, for me, I am very blessed that over the years I have broken through nearly every fear except maybe for me finding uh, a positive romantic relationship. And I think that's because I've had so many partners that have died, which is unusual, it's just something I've attracted to me or whatever. And I've had wonderful relationships, so I know I can find that again. But there's a little part of me that's like, it's easier to just stay put and not date. And that's something I'm working on is refraining my uh, mind to get enthusiastic about going on dates and meeting new people. Um, everybody has something, okay? So wherever you're at, you got to think about what are those areas of you need to break through fears on. Another fear I have, which I will share, is I hate with a passion flying. I used to fly all over the place, but the world's very different now. And after having um, norovirus many years ago, my ears are sensitive to the flying. So for me, where some people can get on a plane, uh, my ears pop easily and I have excruciating ear pain and I hate crowds and airports and stuff. And I just go, it's easier not to travel. And I have to break that habit for myself and get on a plane. And in the past years after COVID here, 
I've done that. I visited some friends, uh, had a beautiful trip to Texas. Um, I just recently went up to Northern California, up to uh, the area of Eureka, which is a beautiful Victorian town, and went to the Redwoods and did things. And I'm really proud of myself. I did that by myself. Um, another thing I did is I love the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo, and I took a trip up there. Um, I took a, a three-day cruise down to Mexico by myself. Um, and just kind of getting out and exploring a little bit. And I'm not really a big explorer. And so that's really getting out of my comfort zone. But it's made some positive changes in my life. And sometimes when you're releasing fear and you're in that feeling of defeat, it's about do something different. Don't just sit and wallow in defeat. Change a habit, get into action, and see what you might manifest. Our next sword card is the Six of Swords, Science. In the Science card, it's the ability to use rational, scientific thinking and being able to be understood in any situation. It's taking rational, steps towards a resolution in something you're dealing with. And also, um, if you think about a scientific person, you know, they're usually a scientist is organized. A scientist is able to um, prioritize. And um, this is very interesting because um, for me, I'm more the creative thinker, but I have learned quite a bit from the scientists in my life. Uh, my second husband, Daniel, was a very well-noted uh, biochemist and professor and uh, very well-known in the scientific world. And what I loved was his ability to quietly think through problems um, and organize quickly and, um, you know, just organize his life. And I'm very much that way. I am very, I, I admit, I'm very regimented in uh, my life. I like, um, I like routine. And science is about routine. And sometimes when we have routine in our life, we're able to multitask. We're able to get things done. For example, as I'm uh, talking this right now, you know, I'm up at five in the morning every morning. Uh, usually I have my cup of tea, I check my email, I do an hour of exercise with my rower and my yoga, and it's still only six o'clock. And I clean my house and I grade papers and get ready for students and I get all that done by seven. If I have to go shopping, I can get all that done and still be home by eight o'clock in the morning. I get so much done in a day. And that is from using rational thinking on how to live a better life. I'm always doing that. And I realize that having a scientific mind can help you get through problems and avoid problems. I avoid a lot of problems. One thing I do, for example, is I live in California and most people are driving like maniacs on the 405 and driving freeways and in rush hour and you know the drama of road rage and you know what i don't do much driving i decide that i will shop you know when you know when shops first open so i'm able to get to lazy acres or whole foods or wherever i'm going and i go when they first open i get in and out in a few minutes with no um, you know, uh, waiting in line. Um, when I go to the gas station, I go at times where there's nobody there. Um, when I get together with friends, I tend to do it midweek. Like, uh, I, my days off 
where most people take the weekend off, I take my Wednesdays and Thursdays off. And I find it so funny that all these people, like, I can't wait to get to the weekend, and then they get to the weekend, and everybody else is also off work, and everywhere you want to go is crowded, and people are running around in traffic on their days off, making themselves exhausted, you know, trying to go places. And I go out on a Wednesday when everybody else is at work, and I can go enjoy a beautiful meal at a restaurant or get together with my friends or if I'm going to an attraction like an amusement park, I'll go when it's not crowded. Just, you know, to me, that's just common sense. But a lot of people don't have common sense, you know. And I think that the scientific mind is able to think through these things rationally and get greater results. Um, one thing with uh, for science for me was holistic science. And I chose very early on that I wasn't going to pump my body full of vaccinations and you know pharmaceutical um, drugs where a lot of people have a condition and then they're just taking medication the rest of their life and putting toxins into their body and i decided that i'm not going to do that and because of my choices i haven't had to take western medication in over 20 years and i rarely get sick now um, if I start to get a cold, I can get rid of it quickly. And I have a, I have learned from my holistic doctors and friends uh, to create in my own home a natural holistic pharmacy in my home. And I understand what these herbs and these formulas do. So I'm ready for anything. If, if I, even in COVID, I have, you know, natural herbs for that. I have herbs for flu. I have stuff for, you know, stomach flu or whatever. I prepared for anything and I think that is from me taking the time to scientifically study this, scientifically study the foods that nourish your body. What foods are antibiotic? Um, I'll share a few, you know, uh, having ginger and turmeric in your diet can go a long way from preventing bacteria in your body, for example. Um, eating probiotic foods, um, eating more alkaline. These are things I've studied to where if you understand this, you know, your chance of getting disease and big challenges in your life are a lot less. Obviously, I made the choice to scientifically study, is it good for me to drink every day or would it be better for me to give up alcohol? I gave up alcohol. That was my choice because I saw what alcohol did to people I cared about and the bad decisions they made with alcoholism, uh, for example. Um, you know, having an air filter in your home, having water filtration on your shower. These are scientific things where, you know, just doing little study and making little changes can change your whole life quickly. And so Six of Swords, I, I love uh, the scientist. And this goes out to my uh, second husband, Daniel, who was a brilliant scientist in my life, this card, okay? And so you can be a scientist too and make great decisions for yourself using rational thinking. One of the sword cards I've always detested is the Seven of Swords, Futility. And if you look at my futility card, we have this sort of kind of frat boy mentality playboy who is not using his mental energy to move forward in life. He is frivolous. He is a drunk. He's a partier kind of personality. He's lazy. Um, he's entitled. He's self-important and yet not really doing anything with his life. And so when someone pulls the Seven of Swords futility card, it's breaking through that giving up of I can't and not being motivated. It's about giving up frustration and self-sabotage and getting back into creating the life you want. I see this card almost all the time with the younger Gen Z generation. Um, I think it's not their fault. I think just living in a time of social media and instant gratification and the computer age, that a lot of uh, kids now are not being motivated to really use mental clarity to bring into fruition 
their goals. And so a lot of people just kind of give up. I see so many kids, it's like, you know, do, what do you want to do with your career? Oh, I don't know. I'll just kind of wing it. I'll go to a community college. I'll just kind of, you know, this sort of kind of lazy, you know, not caring attitude. Um, and it's so interesting that I see uh, people in their 20s and 30s still trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. And it's become an epidemic. And this card, I find, comes up a lot. And, you know, I understand it. I mean, you know, think about the world our kids are growing up in now compared to how it was when I was a kid of the 70s and 80s. I mean, think about, like, you know, a two-year COVID shutdown. I think about my beautiful, talented nephews that, like, my, my nephew Spencer never got a prom, you know, uh, because he, was, he went to school in the COVID years. And just these things that kids deal with nowadays makes it so much difficult, more difficult, I think, to find that clarity in, in life. And so we see um, a lot of kids just kind of, you know, um, lazy and just like I don't care attitudes. And this futility has long-term um, ramifications. And we're seeing more and more um, people struggling, not knowing what they want to do with their life, lacking passion in their life, choosing vices uh, to cover up and mask their frustration. And that's what this futility card is dealing with. Um, now, futility cannot just be a, a young person. Uh, this could happen to anyone at any age. Are you a couch potato sitting around and feeling sorry for yourself and not getting into action? That's what this card's about. You know, this guy never leaves, gets out of his pajamas. You know, he's just sitting at home and I'll just lay in bed and drink and do nothing and you know he's got all the talent to become something but he just doesn't care and that frustrates me because I am the complete opposite of this card so what are you going to choose are you going to be a lazy ass couch potato or are you going to get into action and create the life you want it's your choice the next card is the eight of swords interference with this card of the eight we are looking at self interference and these are the the mental patterns that keep us blocked and hold us back in areas of our life and it's letting go of these patterns that hold us back we all have them and so if you look at my guy, he's in his own little mental prison, in his own little jail cell, and it's all just in his mind and it's in his thinking. Um, we can all do that. We all have traumas that come up in our life or things that are difficult and we can get into reliving that pattern over and over and it keeps us in a prison. I will share mine and I've healed it up now but um, again, I have mentioned that um, because I am a gay male, I had uh, family members and people that turned against me. So I had this feeling of abandonment. And then I lost my husband. And then I lost my second husband. And I lost friends that passed away tragically. And I'm, I kept wearing on my sleeve, I am alone, I am abandoned, you know, victim, victim, victim. And um, it took a long while for me to let people in. I closed up and that was my pattern. Um, I have, um, I know someone whose pattern is um, just the blame game. I can't be successful because I didn't have the opportunities other people had. It was easier for you, Jim. You came from a wealthy family. You were able to go to college, and I didn't have the same uh, background. So therefore, you know, um, I, you know, I'm just not successful. But it's, you know, it's it's blame game. Um, I had a dear friend for many years. Her blame game was because I was abused and molested as a child. 
um, I'm going to punish myself. And she lived as a hoarder, and she blamed everybody in her life every day for her problems. It's my um, roommate's fault that my house is messy. It is my sister's fault because she didn't give me money for my new car, so I don't, you know, my car's not functioning. It is my, it is uh, my fault uh, because I know more about, um, you know, creating a piano album, and I didn't want to help her, so I, I you know, she's, you know, not good at doing an album. These are kind of things where we just get into the blame game, and um, we become victims, and we stay in that mental patterning that keeps us locked in a prison cell. And it's amazing to me, uh, people, drives me crazy, but people that just own their disease or their their mental uh, challenge and just wear it on a sleeve. Um, I had uh, one friend who was a brilliant dancer, so creative, and then she uh, decided to do patterns that, uh, that were not good for her health. She gained a lot of weight, then she developed uh, um, all kinds of autoimmune disease and mental disorders, and she wore it like a badge. You know, I have, you know, autoimmune disease, and, be, and because I have autoimmune disease, you know, I can't be successful, and you know, and then it's like, I have anxiety, and because I have panic attacks, I can't do this and this and this. And she, you, you just like, you know, every other word out of her out of her mouth was, I'm have, you know, I'm, you know, I have a disease. I have autoimmune disease. You know, it was like owning it. Um, others like, you know, I'm an alcoholic. It is not my fault, and you know, I can't help myself that you know I lost my job and you don't understand and I'm like well you could make different changes you can get help you can go to AA you can you know uh, seek out people of support you can seek out you know a spiritual support and there's an underlining thing under your alcoholism you need to address and what is that um, you know um, I had a lot of these kind of issues myself that I had to heal up to get out of my mental prison to make my life the incredible life it is now. Okay, so what is your choice? Are you in a mental prison? You need to examine that part of your life. Um, you know, I, I, when I hear people that are just so brilliantly talented, but they're just addicted to well, you know, I'm not succeeding because my dad was mean to me, you know, or I, I'm not succeeding because my sister doesn't love me, you know, I, you know, I'm not succeeding because I was sexually molested as a child, you know, I'm, you know, we can go on and on with this crap. Um, in spiritual circuits, we call this Machio. Machio is the mental bullshit that keeps you from realizing you're God also, that you are divine. And the Machio is what I associate with, my friends and I associate with just being a muggle. You know, you are you can either be the wizard that designs a beautiful life, or you can be the muggle wallowing in self-pity. And I don't have time for muggles anymore. And that's also a choice, that when you choose to not surround yourself with victim people, and you surround yourself with people that uplift and are living their spiritual truth, then the people around you lift you up and you're in a space of positivity. And this is a choice. Who are So when you are in mental prison, who are you associating with? Are you associating with other people in mental prisons or are you associating with high level beings? It's your choice. Choose wisely. Now to another difficult card of swords, and that is the Nine of Swords, self-cruelty. And this also has to do with, with uh, it being cruel through addictive behavior. If you look at my guy, he is sitting in an absinthe bar drinking himself to death, making himself 
um, older and uh, having hallucinations and illness and destroying his body and doing this to himself. So Nine of Swords is, deals quite a bit with addictive behavior. Um, it's debauchery in a way. Um, are you, you know, what are your toxic, toxically addictive to? Um, are you an alcoholic? Are you a heavy smoker? Do you take pharmaceutical medications and medicate yourself up to mask over the true issues you need to deal with? Um, are you doing recreational drugs? Are you addicted to um, porn and um, just sexual frivolity? Are you, um, uh, you know, and, and there's other types of addictions. Uh, Self-righteousness can be an addictive. Like, look at me, I'm so perfect. Or, you know, um, God, you know, I, you know, uh, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. But wearing it like, it's one thing to be a wonderful Christian that's helping people. It's another thing to be like, I'm better than you. And there's an addiction to that. Um, addiction to, there's just all kinds of addiction. Are you a couch potato? Um, and just sit all day watching TV? Are you addicted to social media and spend your whole life on Facebook or you know on Instagram all day long and not and using that as an excuse not to get on with your life um, are you addicted to coffee this one I just blows my mind that people that waste you know over two hundred three hundred dollars a month just getting burnt bean carcinogenic coffee at Starbucks these sugary drinks and they're there all day long you know just drinking coffee and eating junk food and you know how many people waste their life away doing that. Um, how about, um, you know, it's just, this can go on and on, you know, uh, people addicted to fast food, people addicted to sugar, uh, and there's also people addicted to um, patterns of rescuing others. That's one I see a lot. Um, I had one friend who was, I call it the martyr syndrome. I am such a good Christian. I'm going to spend my whole life giving my money to the homeless and helping people on the street. And on one level, that sounds great. On the other level, she had this self-hatred side of herself and she was always sick. She was always dirty. She always smelled. Um, and she was wallowing in like, you know, like, I, I don't deserve to be luxurious. I don't deserve um, happiness. I need to, you know, wallow um, in this idea of, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth, you know, which is a Christian ideal I despise. I mean, like, who, you know, who, how are you um, going to help the universe if you are poor and meek and you give all your money to the church? And then you have nothing. Uh, that's just stupidity to me. And I know a lot of people live their life that way, you know. And um, so you can be addicted to martyrdom, addicted to being a doer. Um, that's another thing. Um, there are people that are addicted to work. Workaholics is an addiction. Um, I have a friend I love very dearly. But, um, you know, he's got a beautiful home, but, you know, in 10 years, I never met him because it's just work, work, work. And I just got to, you know, make a living and get by and just addicted to being, um, you know, just a workaholic. And that's masking over something deeper that that person's not dealing with, escaping into something. Okay. So what are your addictive patterns of self-cruelty? How are you cruel to yourself? Are you uh, loving yourself and giving yourself, you know, healthy food and exercise and time in nature and vacations and relaxation? Or are you addicting yourself up? What I find really fascinating too is enabling toxicity in others is a form of self-cruelty. I see parents that will defend their right to feed their kids junk food and uh, you know enable them into obesity and health issues and then mask it all over with uh, medications for their ADD and their problems 
and that's an addiction and um, instead of dealing with their own problems and making better choices it's amazing to me how many 12 and 13 year old kids I see that are on 10 different medications it's just insane and uh, that's you know that's a form of self-abuse I mean, no 13-year-old needs to be on 10 different medications, and if they are, their life's really out of whack. And um, we see more and more kids depressed, more and more kids dealing with anxiety and attention deficit disorders on the rise. Gluten allergen, I'm gluten sensitive, and I'm lactose intolerant, and you know, we can go on and on and on with these things and it usually starts with bad decisions of things that are abusive to one's body. You know, your body is the temple of God. What are you putting in it? Look at this guy here drinking like 10 toxic absinthe drinks, you know. Um, uh, what are you doing, you know, or are you treating your body with respect? It's your choice. So stop the debauchery, stop the self-cruelty and treat your body like the temple of God or goddess that it is. The final card of swords is the most difficult card, I think, in the whole tarot deck. And it's one I wanted to make look really horrible purposely. And that is the Ten of Swords Ruin. And we see in this card a homeless man with nothing in rags in the sewer of the street surrounded by disgusting rats and just stuck in this mentality of I don't deserve anything. And there are people that choose this in their life. And people are gonna hate me for saying this, but this is the truth. If you are homeless, you're getting something from being homeless. There's something in your consciousness that has brought that to you and is keeping you locked in this self-punishment of ruin. So ruin represents the 10 of swords that you need to break through your absolutely lack of abundance consciousness and your mental pattern of the world has hurt you being hurt in relationships there are people that wear their lack of abundance and their hurt on their sleeve it's a consciousness. Um, it's very interesting living here in Long Beach where I live around some extremely wealthy people, um, you know, in homes here along the bluff that are million dollar homes. And then I can just go a few blocks into Belmont Shore or into downtown and see homeless people. Um, and it, I find this fascinating. And um, it's really interesting that sometimes I've been on the beach and I have talked to a homeless person and to just to see where their mindset is. Uh, I remember one time uh, a homeless man came up to me and says, uh, you know, can you spare, um, you know, a couple of dollars so I can get a coffee? And at the time I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't carry cash on me. And he went into this blame game of like, well, you should carry cash. You know, you drive a nice car and, and, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you. And, you know, I'm a helpless victim and you should want to help me. And I said to him, sir, you can go around the corner to this church. They have a food pantry and they can get you some food. And also, I believe it's Wednesday and on Wednesdays they have a shower program and you can get clean and get a nice shower. And you know what his attitude is like, well, I just want a cup of coffee. I want what I want. And he didn't want to help himself. I'm like, you are starving and you can go get food. And he couldn't walk across the street to get some food. And that just blew my mind away. Like, you know, you're not going to help yourself. And um, I see this. Another example of this happened to, I'm not saying that all homeless people are alcoholics, but I have one time a guy came up to me, I was at a, coffee house on 2nd Street here in Long Beach and I'm enjoying my 
uh, hazelnut latte iced coffee that I usually get and just enjoying the sun and talking with some friends and this guy comes up to me and he says you know can you uh, give me some money and um, I you know I again I don't carry cash on me and I just said no I'm sorry I don't have any cash but I said um, if you're thirsty or hungry there's you know the coffee house down the street there uh, you know has some uh, free bagels or things that you can get if you're hungry or thirsty um, you know that they you know put aside for the homeless or whatever and his attitude is like give me money and um, I said no I'm sorry I'm not giving you any money and the lady next to me you know you should be more considerate you look at this poor man and I'm the good Christian and I'm gonna give him money and I saw her uh, give him a $20 bill and uh, about an hour later I'm at the local uh, you know uh, grocery store and there he is buying a bottle of booze you know and I just go there you go and uh, it was interesting to just watch these patterns of the the lady who is self-righteous and I'm a better person than you because I'm giving someone money uh, who's poor and this sort of martyr syndrome and then also this man who was just given twenty dollars a uh, bill, and maybe he is homeless, but he could have used that money to feed himself or to help himself, and he goes and buys a bottle of alcohol because of his addiction. It's a choice. So, what are you choosing? Are you wallowing in the street with the rats, or are you designing a life that is wonderful? Um, this card actually kind of brings up a lot of emotion for me when I was creating this card um, You know, I realized that in my life in my past especially after my partner died I was surrounded by people with lack consciousness It's almost everybody I knew was in oh my god, you know, I might be thrown out on the street I can't pay my bills boo hoo hoo and walla 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 and self-pity and that brought me down and I was never ever homeless but you know I went through a period of almost being homeless at one time and I realized it was just my consciousness and once I changed that consciousness I went to luxury and abundance um, I you know I feel so proud of myself I paid cash for my Subaru legacy sports car and just you know and bought a brand new car with leather seats and bow system and everything and just paid cash you know and I realized I, I raised I go wow look you know how far I've come in raising my consciousness and um, it takes work but it's a choice um, during the COVID years I spent that time to um, remodel my home and I feel so proud of myself I come home and it's my sanctuary to go look at my beautiful Italian custom leather couches and my beautiful Tiffany lamps and you know my you know I drink tea from my beautiful carnival glass uh, antique cups and you know think you know I have a big bathtub villager uh, to you know take bubble baths in or whatever you know and um, you know money for trips and and money to go dine out and I don't worry about that anymore I have everything I, I would ever need and sure do I want more of course yeah I would love to again you know have my dream of my Queen Anne Victorian mansion someday and I would love to have a partner um, but I'm working towards that and I know it's coming so I don't worry about it but if you're in this mental loop of victimhood this is what could happen to you and I want you to look at this miserable man on this card living with the rats and do you want to be a sewer rat that's your choice and um, it's a hard card to look at but that's what could happen if you allow your mind mental loops to get the best of you if you are in lack consciousness and if you are in blame game this is what will happen to you ruin don't let that happen to you you deserve better